is struggling not to laugh. Hey! Now, how do we do it? Hi guys, I'm here today with my agent Charlie. This is Charlie. Hello. Hello. Are you nervous? No. Good. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is my agent Charlie. He's called Charlie Campbell, but we are not related. Not related, or there's a lot of people. Nor married. Nor married, no. <laughs> Why did you go there? A lot of people don't know much about publishing and, and they think maybe, you know. Is that why I get such favouritism? Yes. When did we um, become agent and writer? When was that? Uh, 2010 maybe? 2009. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. I emailed Jen a week after, a week before a publisher emailed her and yeah. so it was, it was a very I make his life very easy. easy. Do you want to say what an agent does quickly? An agent... All of the things. An agent is normally the first person to read a writer's work. Yeah. We provide editorial help. We, we, we get it you know, to, to a sort of level at which you can show it to publishers. Uh, we then submit to editors. We, you know, we, we try and package the whole thing, you know, try and help them with their pitch, try and, try and work out you know, what the book is, who's going to buy it, and, and then you know, make it as saleable as possible. And then we send it to editors, we negotiate the deal, we you know, try and get publishers in a lot of other territories in your yeah. case, um, in America, in foreign countries, we try and sell the book with television, with film, and we you know, help the author with the day-to-day -day sort of things so they can, they can write. Yeah, so an agent shop, they know all of the people, all of the people so that you can get on and write the stuff that you need to write and then do the publicity later and they do all the stuff in the middle and make your life a lot easier. And a lot of people ask me whether it's important to have an agent or whether you should just submit to publishers on your own. I would absolutely say that you should have an agent, always. And not just because Charlie's sitting right next to me, um, but because they do know everybody and because you don't pay them directly, they take a, a commission of whatever you earn. So I don't earn anything, Charlie doesn't earn anything. So um, if anyone wants money up front, they're bad people, right? Yes, there no, are people no, out there like that. No agent should charge a reading fee. No, 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 no. Um, so, yeah, I have made a video before talking about how to get your book published, which I'll link up here and also down below. Um, and I put a call out on Twitter asking if there were things you wanted to know about the publishing industry. And Charlie is here to help. And I will chip in with some thoughts as well. So I have your questions here. What is one of the biggest mistakes that writers make when they're approaching agents? I think you... you want to make the agent feel that you've chosen them for a reason. I mean, sometimes they get a submission and it's been copied into 50 other agents and, and they're just saying, dear all, you know, please fight among yourselves for my book. And Which my mum loves. Yeah, and I, I normally reply saying, you know, this isn't the best way to go about it and I'm fairly sure that I'm the only person who's responded to you. How would you suggest that people go and find agents? Would you suggest the writers and artists yearbook or not? Partly the writers and artists yearbook, but also think a lot about the writers you like best, the writers whose work you've enjoyed most recently, find out who their agents, their agent is. And quite often, you know, if you like their work and, and they've influenced you in your own work, they might be a very good port of call. Quite a few people who wondered if they wanted to publish in English, should they contact an English agent even if they don't live in the UK? Ooh. I mean, it's, it's nice where, when, when you are able to see your agent relatively frequently and, and, and you, you can't underestimate the importance of the personal contact there. Mm. Uh, but, but yes, it's possible to represent people all over the world. <laughs> I think this is quite relevant. Is it harder to market a writer who writes in different genres should you only write in one? I don't think you should leap around. A lot of people like to say, but look at Neil Gaiman, and Neil Gaiman built up his readership, he built up his constituency, mm -hmm. and, and, and then you know, he succeeded in a lot of different areas. I think it is, you can't always take your readership with you, and, and I think it is better to try and plan out you know, what you're going to write rather than write wildly different things each time. I'm laughing because Charlie has told me this lots. <laughs> and he would quite like me to write a very commercial crime novel, wouldn't you? Do you think? Uh, well, I would, but I don't think you're going to write it. I've never, <laughs> never suggested that to you. I I, that's you a lie. That is a no, lie. Not a crime novel. Not a crime novel. Just a novel. What? Just something long. <laughs> like just a novel. Any there. kind of novel, Jen. Just a please. Yeah. Yeah. One, one of these days, you will, you will, you'll have one. Yeah. Maybe. I, I don't know. So yeah, you can do it, because um, yeah, I write non-fiction and children's books and short stories and poetry and Charlie hates me for it, so you can do those things. Not true. I have to say, when I won an Eric Grubby Award this year, Charlie was like, Jen, I always said that you should write poetry. <laughs> it's difficult though. 
It is hard, eh? And that's not just because it's difficult to bring over audiences, but also because it means you have to deal with lots of different publishers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And establish lots of different relationships. And it's, it is nice to work with the same people. Tom says, when reading a submission, what's more important, very strong potential and a good start, or an already polished piece? Well, you should have something finished, really, shouldn't you? If it's fiction, it should be finished. You're, you're more casual on this. I'm more casual about this. Mm. I think it, it's just what you send has got to be really, really good. Mm. And the first three chapters have got to be as good as you get them. And occasionally I do write back and just say, I don't think this is, you know, I think this needs a, a, another polish or two. Mm. And um, Agents will always have submission guidelines on their website. Normally you submit the first three chapters of the novel, plus a letter and a full synopsis of the rest of the book. If it's non-fiction, it tends to be a pitch, yeah? Yeah, an outline, but you'll need some sample material at some point. You'll yeah. need something that's like the opening chapter, the introduction. To show that you something can write. To show, yes. Um, Melissa says, short of an expensive MFA course in creative writing, how do you know whether something you've written is any good? Uh, by by sending, sending it to lots of agents <laughs> yeah. and seeing what, and seeing what happens. Uh, but at that stage, it's then too late. Uh, there are a lot of other agents out there, though. So you, you know, if you go to ten agents and they say no, and you get some constructive feedback, which is not mm. always. You don't always get constructive feedback. I mean, on the whole, agents save their constructive feedback for people who they already represent, rather than spending hours painstakingly giving literary advice to. Um, well, how many submissions do you get a week? Um, maybe 30. No, that's not, that's, that's not awful. It's not, it's not, it's not unmanageable. Yeah. But, um, but if I, if I read them all thoroughly and yeah. then, and then craft, you know, editorial notes, I wouldn't have any time to work on the authors who I... And I'm know. a very demanding person, yes. so I need time. Someone's it's about publishing now. Someone says, mm. do you have to live at a commutable distance from London to work in publishing? There are, you know, th there are some publishers outside London, there's some, some very good ones, but there aren't nearly enough. No, there are a lot of independent publishers yeah. outside of London. The main ones, though, sadly, are here. But there are definitely still jobs out there and other mm. related work, if we look at literary magazines mm. and other um, initiatives like that, and there are a lot of um, writing groups like New Writing North who have lots of jobs in a publishing-type atmosphere, mm. as in all to do with books. So if you're interested in getting to publishing, or something to do with books, but you don't want to move to London, or you think that there aren't any independent publishers near you, there are other avenues as well. So just cast your net slightly wider. I'd recommend that you make sure that you're subscribed to the booksellers' um, daily emails, um, and they have a jobs page on there, which is very helpful with internships and stuff as well. Someone actually asked, is it important that you get on with your agent? It's a question. Yes, in a, in a word. Yeah. Um, you know, people work people work harder for people they get on with on the whole. Bribe them with donuts is what I do. I did you do it with cupcakes. I did, I haven't sent you cupcakes in a while, I feel very bad about that. Very bad. Sorry. <laughs> um, oh, how did Charlie become an agent and what does his job entail? We've kind of covered what your job entails, how did you become an agent? I worked as a literary journalist for three years and I spent most of those years applying for jobs with agencies and, but publishing is, is it's hard to get in. I mean, it, it's, it, the jobs don't come along very often, and then there are plenty of unfair things. You know, starting salaries are so low, and it does favour people who live in London or can live in London. My first job was a maternity cover um, for a small agency. I think that's the case of lots of people actually. Yeah, maternity and, um, and I worked as an assistant for quite a long time. And then you know you'll gradually you know you're sifting through manuscripts and then eventually someone lets you lets you take one on. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank I'm you. I'm gonna Jen. let Charlie get on with doing his job. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna leave links to Charlie down below. Charlie is lovely, and also he also represents Fran over at Fran Nerd, my darling Fran, who I sent to Charlie and who signed her contract with Charlie with glitter on it, which is the best thing that I've I've heard all week. So you should definitely if, um, send your stuff to Charlie if you're wanting to become a writer. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing.